Welcome to a special presentation of Sellout Crowd, Conversations with Coach. I'm Bob Stoops. I'm taking time to talk with my friends and colleagues in the sports world to get caught up and share some stories. But first, I want to say thanks to these sponsors, Rose Hill Builders, First Fidelity Bank, and Louie's Bar and Grill. Today, I'm joined by the great OU women's gymnastics coach, K.J. Kindler, one of the all-time best, been the head coach at OU since 2006. All right, K.J., I'm, uh, the, the great K.J. Kindler, 13-time Big 12 champion, six-time national champion, champion. three-time national coach of the year, eight-time Big 12 coach of the year. You've just been dominant. And uh, I want to talk just where did it all start? You, you, you were a gymnast at Iowa State. And then from 88 to 92, I believe, is that right? And then uh, became an assistant coach. Talk about you you being a gymnast and how that's led to this incredible career. Yeah, I mean, uh, my, my journey wasn't like everybody's journey. I was a walk-on athlete at Iowa State University. So um, I wasn't really expecting that I would be a big uh, performer for them, but I went, um, loved the coach. That's why I chose it. So I went to Iowa State and just worked as hard as I could. I actually became an all-arounder there my freshman year, earned a scholarship for my right. sophomore year, and just had this um, incredible experience there, uh, not just with the coach, but also my teammates, everything. And Jumping into college sports, you know, especially from a sport like gymnastics, it was very individualized and the team atmosphere like really clicked with me. I loved it. And I and I was always a junkie, like a gymnastics junkie. And so right. um, I started coaching when I was an athlete there, because back then you could do that to make money, especially if you're a walk on athlete. So I spent a lot of time doing um, a little bit of that and, and kind of getting my feet wet in coaching with younger girls. Um, and then as I graduated, I graduated in December and my head coach at, at Iowa State resigned in December, which, you know, in the middle of the year, that's really rare to see that right. happen. Um, and he had kind of groomed me to take over a position in the coaching staff. Um, he was teaching me a few things in the fall and, and looking back at it, he was kind of getting me ready to kind of uh, step in as an assistant. So. The assistant coach stepped up to head, and I, right when I graduated, the next day I had a job, which never wow. happens. Timing is everything. Um, so I stepped right into that assistant coaching role behind the new head coach, um, Amy Pyle, and uh, we were a dynamic duo for a long time there. So that's kind of how I got started in coaching and just had the utmost respect for my former coach, but also Amy, she um, she really didn't micromanage me. She let me make all sorts of terrible mistakes and uh, <laughs> let yep. me figure it out instead of telling me what to do. She let me um, kind of navigate my way. And uh, she was great at some things that I really wasn't good at and, and vice versa. So we were really a good team. Well, so you're the head coach at Iowa State from 2001 to 2006. While you were there, a mutual friend of ours, Dan McCartney, was the head football coach. Isn't it? Wasn't it great to be around Coach Mac uh, all the time? Coach Mac, first of all, he gave up his time all the time. Like right. he knew everybody's name everywhere. Like you'd walk in, he'd know every single person's name. He'd always address them. He made time for all the sports to meet with them. Actually. I found that very familiar when I came to Oklahoma. You were exactly the same way as Coach well, Matt. Like he was very giving of his time. He always um, paid attention to everything that was going on around him, not just the sport of football. So I felt like he had a really global um, demeanor in terms of the athletic department, and he helped us recruit. You know, you name it. But he also made you feel like you were very important, and I always remember that, especially as a young coach. Yeah, I, I agree. Coach McCartney's the best and uh, love Dan. But uh, from 2006 now till present, you're the head coach here at, at Oklahoma and you've built a dynasty. I believe every year, what is it, the first, you've been first or second ranked coming into the season every single year, I believe, for I don't know, the last however many years it's been. What are what are some of the, the keys? I know, let's, you know, what are some of the keys or your kind of, you know, things that you really base your program on to be so consistent? 
Yeah, I mean, you said the first word, consistency. Like for me, that's been the most important thing. Consistent in everything we do, in our habits, you know, how we go about things. We have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. We're always prepared. Um, there's definitely a, a level of consistency with this program. And I'm not talking about the results as much as I'm talking about the process, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so and it starts all in August. You know, we all know it starts when you're in preseason workouts and setting the right tone and getting everyone to buy in. Um, that's far more important than when you start competing. And so uh, definitely consistency is a big thing. Um, I would also say embracing expectations because um, I think it's really difficult to have that kind of pressure. These young um, young women, they have a lot of pressure on them and they have to really embrace the fact that it's going to exist. Um, you know, Patty always says pressure is a privilege and it's absolutely true. Um, so you have to just kind of wrap your arms around it. Know that you're going to have fear. You're going to have anxiety. Those things are going to go through you. How do you handle them? How do you respond to mistakes? Those kind of things. So like life lessons, teaching them those things I think are really important. But I also think passion. Like passion is so important. If you're a coach, you know, somebody asked me, what's a, what's a typical day like? You know, they asked me that a couple of weeks ago and I thought to myself, there is no typical day in coaching. You know, you may have a schedule practices from here to here, but like every obstacle that pops up every single day is new and fresh and a bigger, you know, a bigger thing to tackle. And you just always have to be ready for anything. And with different teams, different players, um, you're always navigating something new and something different. So I think the passion has to exist. You have to wake up with purpose every day, um, knowing, hey, I've got this list of things to do, but I'm going to, there's going to be curveballs left and right. That's why I love coaching because there's nothing boring about it. Every right. day is, yeah. And, they, and all the individuals are all different. Oh, they're, they're motivated absolutely. differently. I love what yes. you said, and I agree totally the passion, the energy. And I see it watching your 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 women perform, um, and then the team around them. Everybody gets excited for them. I had Patty Gasso on just a few weeks ago, and I love how her team. It is all over the place how much joy and and uh, passion they have competing. And, yes. and as as you just said, I think when you embrace it that way, you're going to perform better. And uh, and I've always I always told my players. <laughs> Same thing. Enjoy the fight. Enjoy the challenge. It's probably what I miss the most as a coach. You get addicted to that, to that struggle, to that fight. And uh, but you're 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 doing it. I, I'm just uh, talk about uh, your your husband, Lou Ball, a long time, one of your top assistant coaches, and uh, and Tom Hill. Your your uh, talk about your, the what they bring to the table. Your your couple of your assistants. Yeah. So um, our staff has been together 18 years. Right. This is like mind blowing because in our sport, as I'm sure in a lot of sports, it's hard to keep consistency on your staff. You know, you have people moving on to higher positions. Well, you've got a I, little advantage I, that your husband is one of them. <laughs> I do. Uh, he could, I guess he could go somewhere else, but he doesn't want to, which is great. Um, but they, we all, we, here's what's great about it. You know, you might say you've been together so long, you know how each other clicks and that's all true, but we all bring something very different to the table and we're all, we all challenge each other. Even after 18 years, like I know what they're thinking and, and sometimes I need to hear those other arguments and those other point of views. Um, and I think we work really well together in that way. Um, Lou definitely brings a sense of calmness to our staff. He's the more reasonable person, the more logical person. Um, he doesn't get, uh, his blood pressure never rises. And he's that calming feature on our staff. Tom is that um, motivational. He really motivates our team. He has really unique ways to motivate them. He does it on a daily basis. Like he's the creative kind of push. And then I'm kind of the one who ties it all together, I think, you know, or maybe the organizer, someone who has um, new and different thoughts, but we, we all bring something very different to the staff. Um, I do think working with women, it's important for them to have a really strong leader, um, someone they can look up to. I would, I would never ask them to do something I wasn't willing to do myself, you know, so that sense of leading by example, I think is something that a role that I take on, but 
we all bring something so different to the table. And I think that's what really works. I agree. It's always good to have diversity, different, uh, different styles on your coaching staff, for sure. Well, you're coming off the Big 12 championship where you just set a 20-year-old record, right, for points. Um, let's yeah. talk two things, I guess. I Let's talk about your upcoming schedule, and then let's talk about your 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 women gymnasts. Yes. Um, so I took a deep breath when you said that because uh, what they've done is pretty mind blowing, even to me. You know, I that wasn't an expectation we ever set, and and that certainly wasn't something we were striving for. But for them to achieve that under our own roof at the LNC was pretty cool. But um, these women are amazing. This team is the team chemistry. You mentioned joy before, and that's something we always mention in the locker room. And this is something brought on by the players. Like they want to compete with joy. Like you said, they want to show people, this is why I love doing this. It's hard. Um, it's hard to prepare for, but this is what I was made to do. And I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. I think that's part of what makes this team in particular really good. Um, we have some great athletes, Jordan Bowers. I bring her up right. because she just tied Maggie Nichols all around record here at Oklahoma, which who knew that was ever even going to be touched? You know, Maggie Nichols, one of the best NCAA gymnasts in the history of the sport. Um, and yeah, an Jordan, incredible Jordan had a 10 in what? The bars, the floor, Three. and the vault, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's just mind-blowing. You know, yeah. those you, you see moments when players have that euphoric game, right, where nothing can go wrong. That's kind of what happened for Jordan on Saturday night. Nothing was going to go wrong for her. She was in a great headspace um, and ready for, you know, ready for anything. And so she just had one of those nights um, and she got engaged the next day. So oh, I wow. guess, yeah. I know, I guess it was just the best weekend ever. For her. <laughs> um, right. And then uh, we have Audrey Davis, who really is the heart of this team. She's, um, she's our starter on several events. The starter is that dependable person, you know, is going to nail it every time. Yep. Everyone trusts them. You know, everyone believes in them. Um, she is she is that person for us, and she's just been a remarkable example for our whole team. And then we have a couple other all rounds: Catherine Lavasser, who's taken on a lot more responsibility this year, um, added the all around, uh, and and again a leader by example, 100. percent And Faith Torres, just a sophomore, um, she made all American in the all around, which I thought was really exceptional. Um, but she's most improved from last year to this year. She has just skyrocketed. Um, worked hard, most improved, um, definitely most improved competitor. Um, and, and honestly, if anybody's got joy, it's her. She wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it if she didn't. And she had a perfect 10 on the floor, I, I believe, <laughs> right in the championship. Yeah, her first one ever. So, like, how could it come at a better time? And she, yeah. she is incredible on the floor. That's where she got the 10. I'm, I'm honestly surprised she hasn't gotten it before this moment, but – um, very deserving, yes. Yeah, and uh, Ryan uh, Reagan Smith, right? Yeah, she yeah she had a, a, a perfect score of, uh, as I was watching and looking it all up, and yeah, that's fantastic. So, talk about what's coming next, then. Uh, you, yes. You're heading to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. Um, and we are the one seed uh, in the overall one seed in the tournament. We'll be going to Michigan where uh, Alabama will be the two seed okay. there and Michigan, the three seed, there will be uh, eight teams there. So we have to kind of fight our way through it. Um, have to be in the top two in both of our sessions to move on to Fort Worth, which is where semifinals and finals will take place, but never take anything for granted. We know how tough this is. Um, we've competed at Michigan consistently over the last decade. So we definitely know the area of the arena. We've seen Michigan and Alabama this year. So definitely kind of know what we're up against. Well, that's great. Why well, you're, you're kind to take time out of your busy schedule to, to visit with me and, and record this podcast. Hopefully it brings you good luck. I wish you all the best. I'll be watching and following it and, uh, uh, give Lou my best and, uh, Wish you all the best of, of luck going down the, down through the tournament. Thanks. We've always, hey, I've always looked up to you. You always made time for us here. You helped half the team is here because they met with you. <laughs> they met well, with you on their recruiting trip, and you make such an impression, and you made a great impression on both um, me, Lou, our whole staff. Like, 
just really gracious with your time. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. I always loved meeting all the athletes from all the different sports. And heck, even one time there, I was lucky to meet Mary Lou Retton came into my office. So, you know, who that was uh, that was great for me as well. So always enjoyed doing it. But thank you, KJ, and all the best. Good luck. Thank you.